Hello and welcome to today's Learning with Leaders. And my guest today is Denise Freyer. She's CEO of SAMA, the Strategic Account Management Association, located in Chicago, but with a global reach. And she will share today with us some of very interesting and insightful experiences when she started her career in a pretty, you know, man-dominated arena, strategic account management, uh, sales, and also uh, in IT. And then she also will give us some insights into what strategic account management young professionals should be caring about when they want to go into that profession. Enjoy. Hello, Denise. Uh, I welcome you very warmly to today's session of Learning with Leaders. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Which time is it now for you over there? It is about 8.30 in the morning, close to 8.30. Wow, it's in uh, Chicago? Yes. Okay, yeah. one of my favorite cities in the US. It, it, is, it is a wonderful city. It's a friendly Midwestern city, and yet it's big enough to have the very sort of high-end music and theater and, and culture. So we love it here. Yeah, and some amazing architecture as well. There yeah. is. There's some great architecture. A good river architecture tour if you ever get to Chicago. Oh, wow. Yeah, true. I need to do that. <laughs> Denise, um, I mean, besides being the CEO of the Strategic Account Management Association, SAMA, um, could you please be so kind to give us a little bit more, you know, uh, background on your professional career as a young woman? Because please, always, also for uh, the people who are listening, uh, we try to focus our discussion and conversation on young professionals. So what was, let's say, some of the highlights and experiences during your career as a young woman in a tech sales role? Uh, good question. There certainly are a lot of stories I recall as I go back through there. But uh, as, as way of background, I started right out of the university and I did not want sales or computers or technology when I graduated. So Good kind plan. of an interesting thing, um, when I was interviewing with different people, IBM came to campus and, you know, who wouldn't go to the IBM interview? So I went and really fell in love with the people and how progressive IBM was. And so I thought maybe I ought to take a chance and I, I would encourage others to think the same way you don't really know when you're that young, right? What you definitely want to do. But so I took a chance and they had a fabulous training program. That's a little different than today. But but back then there was about a year of training and that helped me really formulate what I wanted to do. And you know what? I have to admit that even for a woman in that role, there weren't a lot of them back then, but IBM was pretty progressive in in allowing us to experience that so i um i opened my eyes and said i'm gonna try sales in technology so uh after that then after i made that decision pretty typical career path in sales and then staff headquarters and then management you go back and forth into a lot of different roles uh, one of the things different might have been that i chose one of my staff assignments in HR, and I really enjoyed the people side of the business. So that that gave me an opportunity to really explore that side and I think become a stronger manager as a result. So one of the good things is that I may not have had the fastest career, but I certainly made it mine and tried to, you know, capitalize on the things that that you have a passion for. So I, uh, for me, it was was pretty effective. Um, after that, it was executive management experience and ended up with a global sales transformation role. And this is where really we changed the sales process for the 50,000 global salespeople around the world. So that was uh, clearly a highlight. And then I actually uh, went back to the field as a strategic account manager or a key account manager 
that's an executive role at IBM handling some of our, our top accounts. I had one of our top accounts. Um, and so that really you know, brought it home to being that customer facing role that I so enjoyed. And then I couldn't resist retiring and joining SAMA to do a real focus on that customer experience and really helping our customers grow in strategic account management. I see. I mean, um, when you look back, I, I can imagine that you um, didn't have so many female colleagues at that time. Is that correct? That is correct. In in fact, I will tell you when I uh, had my first child, I was in sales on quota and I was the first woman in the Chicago region anyway that um, took a leave of absence for childbirth and came back so it was they didn't know what to do do they leave me on quota do you know what happened and so it was an experience but um there were certainly some different challenges than you would have today because it was newer back then mm. so um without disclosing too much but if you look at today's let's say young professionals career path in strategic account management and you look back what do you perceive as the most massive changes so when i think of the original early days of my career there certainly were uh inhibitors there there were customers who treated you differently colleagues who treated you inappropriately um, and so, but but at that time, you know, we we sort of just stood up to it, right? I would get advice, and you would just say, you know, that that's you know not appropriate. Fortunately, IBM was progressive, and so there was a support structure mm -hmm. there. Um, so I, I think, and I also think people didn't necessarily expect to put you in key roles. Although that was never written, it was sort of the unwritten behind the scenes, you know, what roles didn't I get uh, because somebody didn't feel a woman could do that. I think today that certainly there is much more acceptance of, hey, be good at what you're doing and it shouldn't matter, you know, what gender you are. I think there's a more acceptance. On the other hand, I think women need to be more confident and coming forward with, hey, I really want to pursue this or I'm not, I don't want to pursue that or that's inappropriate. Uh, so I, I think the, the good news about the change that has been happening is I think that, you know, we've, it is more accepted. Uh, however, there are still challenges out there as we all know. And I think we need to um, be confident in ourselves in order to bring those forward. Yeah, fully agree. Um, <clears throat> when I remember some, you know, when I was a strategic account manager, um, I also, you know, delivered some trainings. Um, and one of the things, and it was very early in the training, you know, there was this picture of, you know, key account or strategic account management is on the one hand about art and on the other hand about science. I remember back when asking the participants, it was pretty balanced at the time still. Do you think that is still valid? The the art versus the science yes. part of it? When you be when you act as a key account manager. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you use the word balance there because I think it is extremely important in a number of scenarios. But yes, I would say you the, the relationship part of strategic account management is not a science there there's certainly pieces of it that you can learn and practice and repeat but it is about that unique experience you're forming so i think that is an art and not everybody has that that desire to make that relationship key by the way i think women may have even an advantage there we we tend to be a little bit more personable uh, at times in that way um but i think on the other side he, there is still a very strong need for real content real facts 
um, knowing the customer's business objectives, being confident both in financial or at least getting help in the financial ends of the business. So I think you're right on, Paco. I think that there is truly still a balance in science and art. Interesting. My personal perception is it tends to go a little bit more into the science part. That's, but I mean, not not big, not not important, not very, you know, significantly. But I mean, due to all the technology, to the you know um, analysis, uh, the the figures, tools. That's my personal opinion. Right, and you do need to have the technology um, or the facts, the science. So I think the difference is. As a strategic account or key account manager, do you have a team that provides that technical expertise? Because you must have it. I totally agree. You cannot fake it. You cannot get by on just being a nice guy. Uh, people do buy from people they like, but you have to have the content there. So um, I totally agree. Now, I have found in, in my sales days, the companies will focus on quota, 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 weekly, monthly, quarterly numbers. And, and that is heavy. I think that's gotten even stronger as the years have gone by to be focused on these tactical results. And yet that's not always the best for the customer. So finding that balance between the internal demands that you have and the external demands from the client can be tricky as you go forward. And, and I hope that in a key account management role, especially you, you, I think have to lean in to the client and, and really lean into their point of view and then try to convince your own company that there's a better way to do something, a better match. I fully agree. And that reminds me of another picture from a training. We were asking the participants, I mean, what do you see yourself in which role? And it was this picture from orchestra, you know, being the leader of an orchestra, uh, you know, so leading internal network, but also the external stakeholders at the customer. So it's both, right? It's a selling job inside and outside. Yes. And in fact, one of the challenges uh, that SAMA has found when we do surveys with our members, it still comes out that the number one challenge is the internal alignment of your own organization. It is harder to sometimes get the organization to rally around you or to customize something for the client to co-create value as we all talk about. Uh, and so it's continued over the, at least the past five or six years that we've seen this, that that remains the toughest challenge for a strategic account manager is internal selling. I fully get that. They're fully right. I mean, it, uh, organizations get more complex every day. Yeah, exactly. So um, coming back to, let's say, your your own uh, uh, experience as a young professional and what uh, we can learn from you with respect to, to younger professionals today, um, what was your most impactful or memorable personal coaching advice, if there is one you would like to share? Yes, I, I think there is one. And in fact, I've probably had a few uh, that I can think of yes. that has sort of really helped guide my career. Um, I'll, I'll share two with you that I think might be worth mentioning. Um, one manager told me, and, and we just kind of touched on this, that the only measure of success really is the impact you've had on your client. So it does help you focus on what's right. What's the highest priority? How can you really um, build that long-term relationship? Because if that's there, you're gonna weather a lot of issues that come forward after that. So I just always remember his the impact is the, the impact you've had on the client. Um, I think the second one, though, and I still say this today to anybody that I'm coaching or mentoring, it was an internal challenge, a, a challenge with uh, staffing and uh, relationship with partners, but it, but more of an internal challenge. And the uh, the executive told me, 
it is more uh, better. It is certainly uh, a key to be effective rather than right. So, so let me repeat that. It's more important to be effective than to be right. And I really let that resonate for a while. So often you want to make sure your point of view is the one that's accepted, right? But if you can step back and try to figure out, can we be effective? Is there another way? How can we spin this? That that balance um, really helped me. And I have carried that through many, many jobs. Denise, uh, on the second one, is that an ego issue? You know, it probably is an ego issue where you feel that, you know, well, this was my idea or this is my plan and you and you want to get that through. And um, it is so uh, inhibiting if you make that your focus. I mean, look at politics today. It's about being right. It's not about being effective. True. And it, it's got to be switched. You really have to focus on effectiveness. And I do think you're right, Paco. Ego is getting in our way in order to do that. So I think women, again, have some advantage here because, I mean, my personal experience is that women do not let, you know, play their egos a too big role in business. I, I will agree with you, Paco. I certainly don't want to... Um, suggest that all men out there have too big of egos. That is not the case. But certainly I think women, maybe because of the upbringing and some of the challenges, it is easier for us to not have that strong ego, not have to be the top uh, most important person in the room. Um, I do think that it's easier for us to be a little more subtle, maybe in getting a point across or looking for compromise, collaborating with others, getting input for decision making. These are things that I think in the past might have been um, soft. And mm -hmm. yet I think they're a very effective way now of really gaining and getting to that best, most effective decision. Mm. Talking now about your role as CEO in SEMA, um, I mean, I can imagine that the pandemic, this, you know, bad word like Voldemort in Harry Potter, um, it has also had an impact on, on SEMA and how your team and you together with your team has evolved. So what did you observe in yourself and with your younger team members? What, what did change? Um, it's a great question. And as I think about some of the difficulties we've had. I think there's some positives and some negatives that have come out of this. Um, we were a little uh, slower to change before the pandemic. Things would work well. Why upset that apple cart? How could we be more innovative? But we weren't grasping at that. And And when the pandemic hit, Although it, it forced us, there was still resistance almost to, well, we can't go to virtual or, you know, so there was, there was a cultural challenge in getting people comfortable. Everybody deals with challenge in a different way. Some people will be aggressive and, hey, let's find a new way. Others may back off and, and want to wait and see what happens. So we needed to push to get ahead of the game. I think we've learned in many different um, recessions or uh, concerns, global concerns along the way, companies emerge, some companies emerge stronger after a pandemic if they have taken advantage of that moment in time to change. So we did struggle with that. Um, I, but I, but I think over time it was like, wow, it really worked. We we made it to the other side. So you have to take some faith, have some faith, and take some risk in making that change. Um, but I would also say life's changed for all of us personally, mm. company or not. There is um, a a huge change in the way we do business. And I wanted to stress that 
now that we become more digital and working from home and we need to not lose the personal nature of business. It's a little bit easier to kind of just do the facts, do your meeting. Meetings are sometimes shorter and and all of that, but somehow you have got to keep a personal touch. It's about interaction and proper prioritization and really working with your clients, your colleagues, your friends, your family in ways that you keep the human side of business. Yes, and uh, Denise, I fully agree, but I think also it's easier said than done because How as, much? as you said, Denise, meetings getting much more, you know, to the point with all the bullet points, shorter. It's I think it's less room to accidentally include some personal and human things. It is, I think it can't be accidental in this environment. Mm. I think you have to figure out how you're going to make that happen. So whether it is uh, some time to relate to a personal experience, uh, the weekend, something that still makes you look eye to eye with the person before you put the chart up. Um, I th- There has to be an understanding of that, the person you're talking to, that person's life, that person's objective, that person's style, right? Mm. And how to make that happen. And it is hard. It has to be intentional. I don't think it can be accidental. Now, I, I do want to say, Paco, I don't want to tell folks, oh, just be, you know, lovey-dovey all the time. You must be organized. You have to deliver your message in an even more effective way. Mm -hmm. You have to be brief. So all of those things are still true, Uh, but I think you have to be intentional in trying to make it personal. Yeah, fully fully agree. So um, we already at my at least planned last question, Denise, time is flying. Um, so when you look, uh, I mean, when you would have uh, give uh, would need to give advice to young professionals who are interested in strategic account management or key account management, uh, what would be also with you know lifelong learning having in mind, what would be your you know let's say top advice to those young professionals when they're interested in that career path? You know, I think that I would fall to integrity as now this is something that is internalized, right? But but with a focus on the kind of character that you bring to the table in strategic account management, it is not only about selling a product that is almost secondary. You, you need sales, so you must end up with sales, but the way in which you do it, it is a higher level job. It is a business leader, not a sales leader. So you you need to have the character that you would have. You have to be trusted and you have to um, follow through on what you say. You have to be able to bring a team in and collaborate and resolve an issue or find a new innovative solution for your client. So I actually think in pursuing this key account management role, strategic account management role, it's a higher level thinking job. It is a path, in my opinion, to CEO. You have to balance more than your company's product line. And so I I do believe that it is way more than just the business skills you need to get your sales done, it is a broader role. So I would encourage people to think outside the box, look for different opportunities within your company to gain another level of experience. So you come as a whole person to that job. Denise, that would have helped me when I was (laughs) a young person. So thank you very much for, for your insights. And uh, I would love to uh, attend one of your memorable SAMA in-person conferences. I hope that will come back very soon. Uh, Thank you very much for your time today. I 
learned a lot myself. It is my pleasure. We would love to host you at a conference. Fingers crossed that May of 2022, we will be face to face in New Orleans in the US. So hopefully we'll have that opportunity. I keep my fingers crossed as well. Bye bye, Denise. Thank you. Bye bye.